Hello, Giants fans, and welcome to your Valentine's Views podcast for Wednesday. I'm your host, Ed Valentine of Big Blue View. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're watching the show on YouTube. And please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts across the Big Blue View radio network. A couple of topics that I want to, to hit for you guys today. I want to talk a little bit about all of the offensive line moves that the Giants have been making. And after that, we're going to spin forward to some discussion of the upcoming NFL trade deadline. So uh, let, so let's get right into it, Giants fans. First of all, let's talk about the offensive line. Giants made a couple of moves on uh, on Tuesday. They corrected what really was a mistake that I think they made at the end of the preseason. Corrected that mistake on Tuesday by signing Offensive lineman Tyree Phillips off of the Philadelphia Eagles practice squad. Giants, uh, Phillips was a giant a year ago, did a pretty nice job. Not a great player, but he's an adequate NFL backup offensive lineman. Did a pretty decent job replacing Evan Neal last year when Neal was hurt. Phillips is a guy, 26, 27 years old. Decent amount of NFL experience at this point can play all can play four positions can't doesn't play center, but has NFL snaps at left and right tackle left and right guard the type of of backup to me who that, that NFL teams love to have guy who you can plug in anywhere in an emergency guy that uh, it, and can do an adequate job. Don't really understand what happened. Don't know why the Giants cut Phillips at the end of the preseason. I know that that Phillips missed part of preseason, part of the training camp with some injuries. But still, this is a guy who did a good job a year ago. And it was sort of head scratching when the Giants cut him simply because NFL teams across the league are looking for guys like Phillips. They're looking for guys who can play a lot of positions, who who may not be great players, but who who can come in in a pinch and 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 play a handful of snaps during a game when somebody gets hurt, or can fill in for a couple of of games and be at least adequate, allow you to continue to function. And we've seen with the Giants so far this year with the injuries to Andrew Thomas, with all of the shuffling that they've had to do at both guards and at center, we've seen too many situations where the offensive line simply hasn't been functional. Josh Azudu playing out of position at left tackle, and now Azudu is headed to injured reserve with the toe injury that he suffered Sunday night against the Buffalo Bills. I feel bad for Azudu, 2022 third round draft pick kid that the giants have had high hopes for kid. They thought could be a guy that might eventually become a starting guard for them. Missed a good chunk, about a third of last season with, uh, with, I believe what was either a neck or a shoulder injury ended up on IR. I think only played in 10 or 11 games. So Azudu now on IR for two consecutive seasons, not a good thing at all for for that young man's development as a potential starting offensive lineman for the Giants somewhere down the road, preferably at guard if Izudu ever does actually become a full-time starter. I think he's proven in his work at left tackle that he really is a guard, although he played four positions at North Carolina in college. Giants drafted him as a guard, and I think it's pretty clear that if he has a long-term NFL future, it probably is at guard. But the Giants did, in placing Azudu on IR, they did sign Phillips off the Eagles practice squad and uh, and correct that prior mistake. So that was good news for the Giants. The Giants had also, earlier in the week, had waived offensive lineman Jalen Phillips, who they actually just brought up from the practice squad before the Bills game really kind of an emergency call-up kind of deal. They waived Mayfield, who might wind up back on the practice squad. I'm not sure. You know, not, 
I don't think anything has, has happened there yet. I didn't see Mayfield's name on the transaction wire on Tuesday evening. So he's not back, but but he could well be back on the practice squad here sooner rather than later. But the Giants added another offensive tackle. They signed Josh Mills, offensive tackle off the Atlanta Falcons practice squad. Mills is a guy been around the league a little bit. I think he's played maybe 17 games, seventh round pick by the Arizona Cardinals in 2019. Hasn't played a lot, played in a few games, but only has 20 some snaps of experience as an offensive player in the NFL, although he can play both left and right tackle. And uh, obviously signing both of those guys Definitely needed by the Giants. Matt Peart, the uh, the Giants' supposed swing tackle, who they seemingly have been refusing to use, has been out with a shoulder injury. Not sure what his status is going to be going forward. The Giants, as we know, also with Justin Pugh, of course, we need to talk about Pugh as well, with the, the tremendous effort that Pugh had Sunday night against the Buffalo Bills, playing 77 snaps, being forced to swing out to left tackle early in the game when Azudu got hurt. Pew, of course, almost a year to the day from surgery for a torn ACL, having had just one practice with the Giants. He had three practices, actually, but just one in full pads, only one practice in full pads over the course of a year thought maybe he could play 20 to 30 snaps on Sunday night, ended up playing 77, ended up playing the entire game, doing a commendable job, gave up a couple of sacks, but honestly, nobody should really worry about that. He did much more than could have been anticipated. And the Giants, I think a little bit surprisingly, returned Pew to the practice squad this week. I think that there will eventually be a Justin Pugh move to the Giants 53-man roster. That could happen this week. I'm still not sure what the uh, what the status is with Parrott, who's missed uh, a little bit of time now with a shoulder injury. Parrott could be headed for IR if the Giants need a roster spot. The Giants could perhaps move on from, from Shane Lemieux, who really doesn't seem to have a role on this team as a, as a backup uh, guard slash center guy who seems to only he got one start this year that didn't go well former fifth round pick who's just never really seemed to be able to establish himself injuries have been a huge issue a huge stumbling block in Lemieux's career but perhaps he's a guy they could make a roster move with I can't believe that the Giants would allow Pew to sit on the practice squad and potentially get poached by another NFL team in need of of offensive line help, not considering how badly the Giants need offensive line help and how much Pew showed he still has in the tank and how much he showed that his veteran presence, not to mention his ability, can still help the Giants as they try to piece together a functional offensive line somehow, some way. So we'll see what happens there, but I would keep watching for a Pew move. I, I, I can't. As I said, I can't believe that the Giants w- would let Pew slip through their grasp here. So, uh, so pay attention f- for that move. The only other offensive line note is regarding left tackle Andrew Thomas and center John Michael Schmitz. I think Schmitz has missed two games now with the shoulder injury. Thomas has been out since week one with that hamstring injury, which has to be a very, very severe injury to have kept him out for five weeks now. Probably going to keep him out for at least a couple more, considering that he hasn't practiced in in more than a month, in probably basically what's a month and a half now since Andrew Thomas has actually gone through a practice. I can't imagine that even if he's able to practice this week, that, that Thomas would be able to play, that he'd be able to ramp up and be ready for at least a couple more weeks. And and again, I don't even know if he'll practice this week. We'll find out more from Brian, from Brian Dable when he talks about injuries during his Wednesday 
meeting with uh, with media in East Rutherford, New Jersey. We'll also know more about Schmitz, but as we sit here, as we sit here today, I have no idea what the Giants' offensive line configuration is going to be on Sunday against the Commanders. Evan Neal is probably at right tackle. Marcus McKethan's probably at right guard. Ben Bredesen is probably at center. The left side, I don't know. Would the Giants dare to play Tyree Phillips after just bringing him back? Would they dare maybe to put him at left tackle and and put Justin Pugh at left guard? I don't know. We'll see what uh, what the configuration looks like. Brian Dable's probably not going to tell us what his thinking is. He'll probably say, well, we'll sit down Friday night after practice and figure that out. So we'll all kind of figure that out on Sunday during warmups uh, for the the Washington Commanders Giants game on on Sunday at MetLife Stadium. But uh, that'll be an interesting storyline for the Giants this week is exactly how they configure that offensive line and who's available to play. All right, let's move on to the second topic that I wanted to talk about today, and that is the upcoming NFL trade deadline, October 31st trade deadline. And the question that needs to be asked, that needs to be discussed, is whether your 1-5 in five New York Giants need to be sellers at this trade deadline. It's a question that I actually asked members of the Big Blue View staff a few days ago, and and we're putting together what we call a roundtable post that will be up at Big Blue View on Wednesday morning with uh, several of our staff members giving their opinion on whether the Giants should be sellers at the trade deadline, which players they should look to move, which players they should be willing to move as they try to, uh, to build a better future for this football team. It's pretty apparent at this point that even if the second half of the season is better with 11 games left, I have serious doubts that the Giants can go eight and three and put get to nine wins and put themselves in position to maybe, 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 you know, have a shot at the playoffs. So I think playoffs is a pipe dream for the Giants. And it's really at this point, it's about, playing functionally the rest of the way, putting yourself in position to to look a little bit better, to grow, to find out about some of your young players, and to move forward into the future of this franchise. And with that said, you know, we'll talk about the trade deadline. My view is that the Giants should be what I want to call selective sellers. In no way, shape, or form should the Giants be in what people refer to as fire sale mode. It should not be, you know, everything must go discounted rates. We'll just get rid of whoever, whoever people will take, you know, sure. You want Saquon Barkley, you'll give us a seventh round pick in 2029. Sure. We'll take that. You know, you want to, you want Leonard Williams. You want to give us a, a seventh round pick eight years from now. We'll take that. No, that's that's not how this should work. That's not the position that the Giants are in. The Giants should listen to offers. When it comes to Barkley, I'm on the fence about Barkley. I look at Saquon, and there's no way that Saquon Barkley is going to, going to draw a Christian McCaffrey-type offer with, with the, the number of draft picks that, that the Carolina Panthers got for Christian McCaffrey. Saquon's had too many injuries, too much time on the sideline to to get that kind of an offer. But maybe the Giants could get a couple of mid-round draft picks for Barkley. If the Giants are in a situation, if they feel like they're not going to give Barkley a long-term offer at the end of this season, if they feel like they're going down the franchise tag road again, then maybe they should look at trading Barkley if they get a decent offer. I'm not standing here or sitting here banging the table and saying that they have to. I'm just saying that if they get what they consider to be a reasonable offer, a couple of mid-round picks that maybe they could flip on 
on draft day, maybe they could flip those picks to to move up higher in in round one or round two, or go chase a player that they really want. You know, on on the first or second day of the draft, maybe you consider that. You don't have to trade Saquon. I think I think you could you could maybe get give Saquon a two year deal at the end of this season. I don't know. I don't know what Joe Shane is thinking. When it comes to Saquon at this point, I can't imagine that the Giants not having been willing to give Saquon a, a long-term deal to his liking at the end of last season, I can't imagine that they're going to be willing to do that at the end of this year. So I think you have to consider trading Saquon Barkley. I don't think it's a must. I think it depends on on what kind of offers you get for Saquon. The other name that leaps to mind when I think of Giants who could potentially bring something other than a throwaway seventh round pick in a trade, the other name that leaps to mind for me is cornerback Adoree Jackson. Adoree Jackson is a good player, not a great player, not what I would consider an elite cornerback, not a shutdown corner. He's not a guy who creates a lot of turnovers with interceptions and things like that. He's not a game changer. But Adoree Jackson is a good player who could help a contending football team. And contending teams are always looking for extra cornerbacks. They're always looking for more cover guys. The way the league is now, you can never have enough of those guys. Adoree Jackson is a guy who's in his final year He's in the final year of his contract with the Giants. The Giants have Tay Banks now. They like Trey Hawkins. I don't know if they think Trey Hawkins is going to be a starting outside cornerback in the future. But I could see the Giants perhaps moving on from Adoree Jackson because at the end of this year, Adoree Jackson will not be easy to re-sign. He's a guy who's on the on the final year of, of what originally was a three-year, $39 million contract. He's going to be 29 years old next year. He's the kind of guy who y- you begin to be hesitant to give some of these guys, you know, at some of these positions like cornerback and running back, and you begin to be hesitant to give some of these guys you know, big money, long-term deals as they approach the age of 30. And, and that's the kind of deal that, that you'd have to give a Dory Jackson. He's not going to sign for a, a one-year deal with the Giants. He's going to want multiple years. He's going to want good money. And I'm just not sure that that with him you know, approaching the age of 30, I'm just not sure that that's something that the Giants are going to be willing to do. So I think that Adoree Jackson is a guy you could see the Giants move. I think they could get, you're not going to get a second round pick for Adoree Jackson. You're not going to get a first round pick. You don't get that kind of value for for most NFL players in, in in trades at this point. you Maybe you would for a superstar, but Jackson is not a superstar. You might get a fourth-round pick. You might get a fifth-round pick. You might get a couple of picks in, in that range for Dory Jackson. It might be worth your while to, to remove the rest of, of Jackson's cap hit, you know, for the rest of this year and, and see – what you can get in return. And again, you might want to use that pick. You, if you if you get a couple of picks in return for Jackson, you might want to flip it to try to move up in the draft. You never know. But Jackson is a guy who I could see the Giants perhaps move. People might ask about Leonard Williams, and I, I just I can't see anyone really being willing to to take on Leonard Williams, although he's another veteran player in the last year of his contract, but Leonard Williams has a $32 million cap hit this year. That's the highest cap hit of any non-quarterback in the NFL. An acquiring team wouldn't be responsible for all of that, but would still be responsible for whatever is left on Williams' 
$18 million base salary for the rest of the year. So you're talking about, you know, at the trade deadline, you're talking about probably $9 million, $10 million, something like that. And not everybody has that kind of cap space at this point in time. And, and I'm not sure if Leonard Williams is enough of a difference maker for an NFL team to be willing to take on that contract right now for a guy who's going to be a rental and is probably going to want, you know, like I, like Jackson would, is probably going to want a pretty nice contract at the end of, of this season, though I can't imagine him getting the, the kind of contract he got from the Giants three years, $63 million that he got from Dave Gettleman a couple years back. But he's still going to be a guy who's who's not going to come cheap in the offseason. So I, I, I could see the Giants being willing to listen to offers for Leonard Williams. I just can't see anybody actually being willing to, uh, to take Williams off the Giants' hands considering the financial ramifications. I'm not sure anybody else on the roster is really going to drum up that much interest or bring the Giants anything more than a seventh-round pick. You might move Paris Campbell because he really doesn't have a role right now with the Giants really committing to uh, to the young guys in Jalen Hyatt and Wandale Robinson at wide receiver, using Isaiah Hodgins and, and Darius Slayton as the other two wide receivers who get most of the playing time. But I can't I can't see you know Campbell as a as a guy who, who would bring you more than a seventh round pick. People might ask about trading Evan Neal, but I, I can't see that. We talked about the Giants offensive line being in such flux at this point in time. I can't see them being willing to move on from Evan Neal at this point in time. I can't see them feeling like they could get value for a guy that they drafted seventh overall a year ago. I think that the Giants will feel like the best thing for them to do is to continue to play the young man whether they leave him at right tackle, whether they ultimately decide to move him inside to guard, if they can figure out you know, who might be the replacement. Maybe that's Tyree Phillips, who they just brought in. Maybe that's Yadni Kajust, who they signed to the practice squad a week ago. So we'll see. we'll see what happens with Neil, but I can't imagine the Giants being willing to move on from him at this point in time. Other than that, I'm not sure that there's a whole lot on the roster that that teams are around the league are going to be clamoring for but I, I i would consider barkley williams jackson if if teams are are willing to make you you know decent offers for those guys and i don't know that anyone will be i look at but i do look at the giants as selective sellers it's definitely not all of these guys have to go i would even say that the giants who are in what I call building, not built mode. They're a really, really young team. I think I saw a graphic today that only one team in the NFL, if you go by snaps played, only one team in the NFL, I think it's the Packers, has actually played a younger roster than the Giants have, have played so far in the 2023 season. I would even go so far as to say that if the right young player if the right player on his rookie contract is available and I don't know who that would be to be honest with you but I think if a if there's a a guy that the Giants think is a difference making type player on his rookie contract who might be available I think that's the kind of player that I could justify seeing the Giants actually going out and trying to acquire, which would obviously make them buyers. And again, it's, I would say, selective buyers. I I can't see them giving up massive draft capital to, to bring in any any player at this point. But I I could see the idea of bringing in, you know, one guy who they think might be a, a difference maker, might be a guy they'd like to work with. I could, dev I could get on board with them doing that. But anyway, I would consider them mostly to be selective sellers at the upcoming trade deadline. At least that's the position that I would support based on 
if you get a decent offer for some of these players that you don't think are going to be long-term pieces of your future, then, then I think you have to consider taking that offer. Anyway, Giants fans, that is the show for today. Always appreciate the support. Thank you, as always, for listening. Please stay safe out there. Take care of each other, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.